This video will cover an overview of the Baker AWA4. So let's start over here on the left. We'll talk about the different connectors that we have. The first is the uh, VGA output, which allows you to connect your AWA to an external monitor. This could be useful in a shop environment where the, the unit is fairly fixed in place and then you can want a larger screen for display. Uh, it's also useful for training if you want to display uh, to a large group of uh, a, an audience, large audience. The next connector is the AUX power pack connector. This is a 25 pin connector that is used to interface with a power pack or a impedance transformer, the ZTX transformer, which is used for armature testing and, and low impedance testing. Um, below that we have four USB connectors, which you can see the combination keyboard and mouse, which is supplied with the AWA, um, is connected to. Um, we can also connect um, memory sticks, USB memory sticks, to transfer data to and from uh, the AWA. Uh, in addition to the keyboard and memory sticks, um, you can also select or you can also connect some USB printer to the AWA. And there's a selected number of drivers that are preloaded. You can also load your own drivers. Uh, to run a printer directly from the AWA if desired. Below the USBs, we have two indicate, uh, indicating lights, one for the hard drive and one for the computer uh, power. So finally on the left side, we have the, an Ethernet connector used to connect the tester to a network. So that if you wanted to store data uh, remotely on a server, you could, you could do that. Okay, we have two recess buttons here, which are basically the computer reset buttons. Um, then we have the display touchscreen interface. Then on the right side, we have the open ground uh, indicating light. This would illuminate if your power supply was not properly grounded. Uh, this, is, this is also associated with a safety uh, interlock that wouldn't allow the high voltage power supply to be energized if you didn't have a proper ground. Now, this can be overridden if you're in a situation where you're connected to an ungrounded distribution system, but proper safety precautions need to be uh, taken prior to overriding that interlock. Uh, below the open ground, we have the uh, equipment stop, the e-stop button. Um, you can press this button, will ensure that voltage is removed from your high voltage leads at any time. Um, to reset that, you simply twist the button. Okay. To the right here, we have a potentiometer, which is used to manually control voltage uh, in the event that you want to perform a manual DC or surge test. Um, since the tester is completely automated, we recommend automatic operation, but there are certain cases where manual testing might be desired, and that's what that's provided for. And then we have the push to test buttons along the bottom here. One's labeled Megohm DC. This is for doing... Um, manual DC testing. Um, you'd have to, of course, be on the proper test screen for DC testing. And then by depressing the um, Megom DC button will allow you to perform a high pot test, a manual high pot test, using the potentiometer to control voltage. The L1, L2, L3 are used similarly, but for surge testing, in a manual mode and pressing L1 will energize the lead one and then you would control the voltage with the potentiometer as you would for, for manual testing. Test to lead two, test to lead three. Now normally we're going to run the, autom uh, the, uh, uh, the advanced twining analyzer in the automatic mode which is its strongest feature by hitting the run auto test and to initiate the test pressing the Megohm and lead three buttons simultaneously to initiate automatic testing. Okay, of course on the right we have our three high voltage leads labeled one, two, and three. And we also have a ground lead. Above that we have the high volts, um, high voltage leads energized light, indicating light, which will illuminate uh, during high voltage testing. Megger, PI, 
uh, DC high pot, step voltage, and surge testing. Below the high voltage leads, we have the low voltage leads. These are the four wire Kelvin bridge um, circuit detachable low voltage leads, which are used for low voltage resistance testing. All right, on the side panel of the AWA, we have a connector for a remote e stop and safety light conne uh, connector. Here we could connect an optional accessory that allows for a e-stop you know, uh, away from the tester, as well as some uh, very obvious safety lights that let everyone around know that you're performing testing. Flashing red light for uh, high voltage leads energized, and then solid green light for testing secured. So that's what that connector's for. Of course, we have the on-off button and the power supply cable. All right, the back of the AWA has a few things we'd like to point out. The first is the uh, ground post that's provided to uh, ground the chassis uh, external from the power supply. Um, you'll want to use that if you're in, in, in an ungrounded distribution system. Um, and that's because we have the, uh, open, ground, or the open ground interlock. Um, if you override that interlock, you want to ensure that the chassis is properly grounded before you override that interlock. So you just basically just connect a lead there to earth ground and you'll be safe and good to, to pr proceed with testing. And then finally, I wanted to point out the, um, the product name, model number, and serial number uh, is located on the back of the unit. This information is very helpful. If you call into tech, su tech support, they'll need this information to properly address uh, any concerns or issues that you might be needing assistance with.